Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. It's important to have a way of visualizing and organizing the notes on the guitar neck. Since I spent most of my time improvising over jazz harmony, I have a way of doing this that helps me understand the chord in its context and relate what I'm improvising to the chord. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes and exploring interesting arpeggios and scales, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The way I see the notes on the neck and the way I organize and think about this is really tied into what I need when I'm playing it. So I kind of have three layers and uh, of course the basic layer that I'm working with is just the chromatic scale, so that would be the entire fretboard. And um, I'm sure if you're watching one of my videos, you already know how to sort of come, count along a string uh, and, and know what notes you're playing. So you have E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And in that way, that kind of overview, otherwise that's one way of building it. And the, another way would be to just take a simple song and try and play it in all 12 keys. Uh, there are lots of ways of doing this. This is of course important, but just knowing all the notes doesn't really help you that much because then you just know all the possibilities. But when you're playing a piece of music, then some notes are more important than other notes. And uh, there are a few other layers that you can put on top of this that are going to refine that and going to help you sort of have something that you can use when you're improvising. So the second layer that you would put on top of this would probably be a scale. And uh, the reason for that is, of course, that most of the music that I play at least is in a key and it might change scale along the way. But uh, it's very often that you have one scale for several chords. So a scale is sort of a context that will contain different chords and it will describe a larger part of the song. And that makes it more useful to also have that in there. And um, the way you think about that is, of course, just knowing the scale all over the neck. Then we have the top level. So we have a song and it's in a key. So we figured out that it's about these seven notes. And then we have the different chords in different bars. And of course, we want to relate what we're playing to those chords. So the top level would be just the arpeggios. It's a little bit simplified. Uh, you can think about that in a more nuanced way, but for the purpose of this, I think it makes more sense to us to really think about the basic chord and work with the basic arpeggio. So let's turn that into a practical example. If we take a really simple song that's consisting of a 2 5 one in the key of C major, so D minor, G7, C major, then if I'm improvising on this using the chromatic scale, then I have the information of where all the notes are, but I don't really have, have them ordered or prioritized in a way that I can tell, okay, this is going to work with this progression. It could fit on any progression at all, and it doesn't really matter. There's nothing telling me, okay, you should probably use these notes. The next level of organization that's going to make a little bit more sense is to recognize the fact that this song is in C major. So maybe we should use a C major scale. So in this area of the neck, that will probably be this position. And now I can play something that's probably going to fit, because most of these notes will fit on all the chords. But with that information alone, I'm not going to be able to play something that's really um, tying in with the chords and really emphasizing now we're on D minor, now we're on G7. So I kind of need to refine even more to relate it to those chords. In a way, we took the chromatic scale and then we highlighted the major scale on top of it. And if we start highlighting the notes of the arpeggios within the major scale, then we have more material where we can say, well, we can play all the notes of the major scale and they'll sound fine, but we need to emphasize the notes of the chord, and that will be the arpeggio notes. So in that way of thinking, we already have something that's going to help us relate what we're doing and what we're trying to use to the chord. So that's what will be the next thing. So for the D minor 7, we'll have this one for the G7, and of course the C major 7, and then we can play lines that would give us the sound of the chords as well. So. Organizing the notes and thinking in this way is going to help you being able to play over chord changes and relate what you're doing to chord changes. And actually, if you sort of try to generalize the idea a bit when you're practicing, then it's also going to be a way for you to take any scale and be able to play over any chord that's diatonic to that scale. And in fact, that will be any mode of that scale. The way I suggest that you practice towards thinking like this, well, the chromatic scale, so the first basic level, I don't think you need to work too hard on that. Uh, I would imagine that you already know uh, what notes the strings are. And that, as I said, you can count up and down chromatically and figure out what notes they are. You should be able to do that without too much trouble. Uh, for the rest, the chromatic notes are just going to be 
kind of the notes that are left over when you take in the scale because most of the songs and most of the chords we are going to be playing on are in a key or at least related to related to a scale. So the next level that that really needs attention is probably just sort of seeing the neck um, in in a scale shape or in 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 terms of a, a scale. The first thing you need to do with that is probably to learn some positions, mostly just because you want to cover the neck in sort of playable uh, subsets of of what you can do. So in that case. Uh, I play mostly three notes per string. I find it really useful to have sort of a very solid way of covering uh, the neck so that you you always have the idea that you're in a scale and that you don't have any places that are kind of in between. Uh, so for me that that's really important and that's also why I use seven positions and not five. And um, I would say just well practice your scale positions because you want to have the overview of just what the scales uh, are on the neck and that means really just kind of seeing them. Uh, you can you could sometimes buy these guitars with lights in them. You can turn on lights, and that's kind of what you have want to have in your mind, I guess, uh, in thinking like that. So, so just sort of that these notes are highlighted if you're in the key of C major, and also when you practice this, I would say try and and sort of think the note names or. Uh, say the note names or have that as part of what you what you practice as well so that you know that it's C major but you also know that it's F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I think it's just important to check out and it's actually not that difficult. If you know a C major scale you know the order of the notes so you don't have to think about that this is a G. If you know this was an F and you know that this is the next note in C major it's going to be a G. So that means that if you theoretically know the scale then that's also going to help you know the notes on the fretboard. And I think Sometimes that's a little bit overlooked, I think, uh, because that really helps a lot. But of course, you can do several things in terms of getting more used to connecting the different phrases, the different uh, positions. So that would be the, for instance, taking out something like this and then just thinking this is just a chunk of a position and then moving it to the next position and then kind of see how, how they are some of the same notes and how they sort of interlock and in that way understand how that moves. And hopefully it, the association will give you the rest of the scale as well. You can do that on uh, all uh, string sets, for instance. I think I did that, at least. And it's not the kind of thing you need to do really a lot, I think. The next thing you can uh, work with would be to try and start to uh, find the arpeggios within the scale. So it's really important that you don't just play arpeggios away from your scales, because you need them. And whenever you're playing on a chord, that chord, of course you need the arpeggio of the chord, but you do need to have the scale around it because that that surrounding is just there that's just part of of what is around that uh, at that point in the song at least if it's a song in a key it has to be fairly atonal if that's not the case uh, so for that reason i would say i mean the, the exercise that i do the most is actually just to play the diatonic seventh chords in the diatonic triad so the, if i stay with c ma uh, major so just these arpeggios one octave arpeggios even and um, of course you need to know this F, G7, A minor, B half diminished. And you can do the same with the triads, that's also very useful. And anyway, you just want to be as free as you possibly can in, in the scale, so you can play as many things as possible. I think these exercises are really useful because you, I use this all the time when I'm soloing. So I don't mind spending a lot of time doing this and doing this every day. Uh, and I still do, I have been doing that for 10 years at least. The next thing you can do, and this I didn't do that much, but it is useful, is to just take my position of the C major scale here, and then uh, take an arpeggio out, and then really just play that arpeggio in this position, coming out of the scale. So this is again about using your knowledge of the scale and your knowledge of where the notes are within this position. And uh, if I take, uh, well, let's take the D minor seven, so, the first note I have is an F, which is the third, so F, A, C, D, F, A, C, D, F, A. Those would be the arpeggio notes of D minor 7 in this position. And those are the notes that I want to see. If I have to play on a D minor 7 in the key of C major, those are the notes that I kind of want to highlight. So that's how I want to see it. So that's why I want to play that exercise. And of course, if you're really good at playing your diatonic arpeggios and, and you know the notes of the scale, that's not going to be that difficult. So hopefully, if you practice like this, there are a few things that you'll achieve. Uh, we have the understanding of different chords within a key. 
So that helps us tie together parts of a progression and understand the fact that those chords actually go together in a key and that they're just sort of uh, different sets of notes that get priority in the song along the, the different bars. And that helps us just tie things together because we have the key as a surrounding thing that ties everything together. The other thing is that it's gonna, we're also working towards just taking any subset. Of course, now I'm taking a D minor seven arpeggio in this position, but really I could have taken other arpeggios or other scales even within this and then emphasizing those. Uh, so I could have taken D minor pentatonic or E minor pentatonic because that's a subset of the C major scale as well, and then emphasize those. And the ability to do this it's really going to help us uh, sort of emphasize a lot of things and also to get a lot of different sounds and, and, and get a lot of different things out of a scale. Uh, and for one thing that's really important is also that's really the ability to, to play any mode uh, within a scale. So you don't really have to think about modes. This kind of takes that away, which in many ways modes is really not that great for jazz, which is something I still need to do a video on. Uh, I think I said that before. For me, the last advantage to this is also that if you you could imagine that you would just start with the arpeggios and then just say, well, I'm only going to think about the arpeggios for each chord. Uh, but if you don't have the context of the scale in there, then that means that you have the chromatic scale and the next level is the arpeggio. Uh, and then there's no difference between a nine on a, and a sharp nine on a C major seven, really. And that doesn't necessarily make that much sense because those are two very different sounds on top of a C major seven, one you can use almost all the time, and the other one is, is really out there. So for that reason, it's also nice to just have the context of uh, understanding which extensions are probably gonna work well with this context. Uh, and that's actually coming out of the scale and out of the key. So that's some insight into how I try to organize the notes and how I think about them as being sort of different layers or different priorities at a given point in a song. And of course, this sounds quite Theoretical, I'm, I'm used to thinking in a sort of very systematic way, apparently. At the same time, I think this way of thinking really helps you understand not only what notes fit on the chord, but also a little bit something about the context of the chord and, and seeing some of the options that are available if you're playing over the chords. And I think that's really, really important. And I think it's also actually applicable to any instrument, that this way of thinking. It's, I'm demonstrating this on guitar and I'm talking about it on guitar, but really it ties I think the way of thinking is really just going to be the same for, for any kind of instrument. Um, so I'm curious if you have your own way of thinking about the fretboard and organizing the notes on a progression. I think that would be a nice discussion for the comments. Uh, at least I wanna, I would like to hear what, what you guys think about this, how you think about this, uh, because I think it is an interesting topic. I never really thought too much about it until they kept coming back to, the, to it in, uh, in the guitar hour with, uh, with uh, David Beebe and uh, Tom Quill, because they seem to be talking about this really a lot. So, um, so that's kind of also one of, the ways, one of the reasons why I'm making this video in the first place. Um, for the rest, let me know what you think, if you have a great idea about uh, how to visualize the nose on the neck and how you think about it and why. Uh, I'm, I'm always interested in that, and I'm sure a lot of other people watching the video are as well. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. I publish a new video every Monday and Thursday, and I've been doing this for quite some time, so there's already a lot of material available on my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep making videos every week, and I'm very grateful for that. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching, and until next week.